In the constantly changing world of fundability, the big question is this. How are entrepreneurs and real estate investors like us, ones who want to grow our businesses and who are tired of paying for really expensive alternative lending, how do we tap into the most inexpensive money available and do it without the hassle of typical borrowing? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Welcome to the Get Fundable Podcast with your host, Merrill Chandler. All right, everybody, welcome back. Merrill Chandler here, your host of the Get Fundable Experience, right? The Get Fundable Podcast, the Get Fundable Universe. And I, I in this in this instance, I'm going to be I'm going to be sharing just a, a, a crazy story. Uh, an insane story, but more importantly, a life, a, a life could have been life-threatening story. Um, had we not m- taken care of some precautions, but I was literally trying to dig myself out of the hole I put myself in. So let, let's get, let's get started. I, I'm embarrassed, but as you know, I will never sell you out. I'll tell you the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And then We'll kind of sort through the uh, the shambles of my life, and then and and come home with how do we learn from my experience, right? And how do we avoid our own landmines? So uh, here I am. I'm uh, I I'm uh, I love snowmobiling, right? Snowmobiling. Everybody's you guys are already going. Oh, don't. Oh my God, don't tell me, Meryl. So I love snowmobiling. I'm up with a family and friends. And we are uh, we are having a blast all day. It's West Yellowstone, but not the city. There's there's a two top. There's a bunch of great mountains um, to the west of West Yellowstone City. And we were we'd spent all day uh, up in the up in the hills, uh, snowing, uh, sledding it about i don't know 3 p.m 4 p.m you know it's getting dark it's winter up in up in uh the wyoming the yellowstone area so it gets dark five ish or so it's about four o'clock and we're headed out, we're headed home back to, to west yellowstone and uh, to get in the hot tub have a great meal and kind of regale the tales of the day <laughs> well <laughs> that was not what happened so um, my friend Dion and I, and Dion is one of the key men um, that uh, blew up Lexington. So it seems like the last couple of episodes have been about my old school friends, right? We talked earlier about um, the other, the co-founders of Lexington and, and, and our adventures down in uh, Chiapas in Southern Mexico. Well, this was with Dion, another one of the, uh, one of the, the Key men founders, uh, or actually responsible for blowing up Lexington uh, back in the day. And his name's Dion, and dear friend, uh, uh, amazing man, uh, <laughs> nothing but great things. But and Dion was, uh, you know how sometimes you have a, a great relationship where what, and many of you, even in your relationships, one of you is the gas and the other is the brake. So between the two of you, you have there, there's usually some version of should we say uh, choosing deliberately where you want to go and what you want to do, right? There's, there's, there's an element of caution or at least some checks and balances, right? Yeah. Not with, not with Dion and myself, this was, I I'm the gas and he's the nitrous. So it was always just hell. Yes. So, so we're on our way back and we had looked at this. Remember we spent like three days, four days sledding and every, we oh, there's literally thousands of acres of beautiful mountains to to go explore and trails to 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 uh, to meander and like the three previous days every time we were on our way home we saw this little this little exit and uh, it was a, a little it was the it was the road and then later on the train tracks that go into town. And so there's a five mile, we were about five miles from now, which is a long time, a, a long way on sleds. But if you go down, we're about five miles out of town and get groomed trails and, you know, the, the, the forest, uh, the forest roads, the forest service roads. So cool all the way into town, but Dion and I have been looking at each other and we are like, 
we know where that ends up. The train tracks go into town. So why don't we, so do you want to try the train track? So we're on our second to last day. Uh, it, it was the last day. And we uh, and we're like, all right, you guys, we're going to head here. We'll meet you in town. And I believed, we believed that it was going to be a shortcut, right? It would be shorter because the, the trails meander all the way around another hilltop and, and before you get into town, a hilltop, a, a kind of a mountain and w- the train, we could see it as the dusk, well, as dusk was settling, you can see the glow of the lights of town. So we, then that glow of the lights was right above these train tracks. Um, but again, it had been snowing now for 20 minutes, a half an hour when we decided, yep, let's, let's head down, uh, let's head down, follow the train tracks. So initially there was like a, a, a service road next to the train tracks, but pretty soon we had to pop up onto the train tracks. And remember there's about two feet of snow on top of these. There were no recent uh, sled marks. We were on top of a foot of snow, maybe, maybe a little more. So we were kind of uh, grooming our own trail, right? We're creating and we're, but we've been, exp- we're experienced sledders. We've been doing this for years at this point. And so it was just an adventure to us. We're like, let's just blaze home. We've never done it. Let's, let's head down here. So we're probably a mile into this trail and we're, it, it's piece of cake. I mean, and now this is the first warning sign. If something is a piece of cake and you've never done it before, that just means that something might be coming at you a little later on um, to, to, to make you think twice, right? We're just cruising along, but it's beautiful. There, it's it's a, a very narrow, uh, I can't even call it a canyon, more like a gorge, right? Uh, a, 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 a rav- sometimes as small as a ravine. And we are, and we're just, cruising along like 30 40 miles an hour fast though that's really fast for a uh for on a sled and so we're cruising and no nothing's in our way and we're just having the time of our lives and we're just but we're staying on this trail and just like train think of train tracks anywhere in a mountain setting the 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 uh, the mountain was on the left hand side it planed out for about 10, 15 feet of where the train tracks were. And then it went over to the other ravine uh, or the other side of the ravine and up. So we're literally in this little ravine cruising. We started noticing that the ravine started to create a dip on the right-hand side and it became steeper and steeper and steeper so that now we're on a cliff riding along the, the, the railroad track trail. I, the air quotes for anybody who's who listening to me instead of watching. And so the further we went, the steeper the ravine. So now all of a sudden we're like, all right, this is, you know, it's not worrisome because it's flat and we're on, we're on fresh powder and we're cruising along the, the tracks, but down, there was probably 60 to a hundred feet down the other uh, down the, the right-hand side of the trail. Whereas when we started out, it was just train tracks in the middle of a ravine, right? But now it started, now it started uh, creating this huge ravine down, in, down below us to the right. So we're cruising along and we stopped, we walked to each other um, because it's, it's only like 10 feet wide. So we stopped and we're like, what do you think? What do you think? Do we turn around? No, we're good. This seems good. Um, it's a flat terrain on the train tracks. Can't see that if, if the train tracks likely not to have a landslide or something. So no harm, no foul. Boom. Back on our sleds. And we slowed down a little bit, but we just headed out. We're a mile in again. These distances are far on a sled in, in powder. So we cruise, uh, we, 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 we keep going and then up to the far right, uh, probably, I don't know, visibility was, I don't know. It was, it was snowing. Um, visibility was 200 yards maybe. Um, and then we saw that the rev- that the train tracks crossed a culvert kind of a, you know, the, a culvert is, uh, where they put 
there was a creek down at the bottom and it was kind of a metal uh, a metal uh, um, culvert I guess that's the word they use but it's a, just a metal pipe right corrugated tin that's it, that the tracks went over before it continued and now the trail was on the right not uh, on the left of this ravine that was now down to our to our right so we could see it a little ways up and we're like okay looks like we're going to cross and i'm sitting here going so if this cr- if this train crosses um this culvert then we're going to be kind of nothing to the right of us nothing to the left of us so it's getting a you know fill in the willies right but this is all adventure because it was a straight path and 10 feet that's plenty of room on a sled we're like okay uh, we can do it so we keep <laughs> tooling down and then about i don't know 25 to 50 yards away from the bef- before the track started to cross the, the ravine and there was that you know the the earthen uh, uh barricade where the culvert let the stream flow under it we ran into a avalanche now the avalanche that sounds like super huge an avalanche is is of any size it it was a snow slide let's let's make it reasonable it was a snow slide and the snow slide was about 10 feet wide no sweat right but um for i'll try and describe this carefully for those of you who are watching you'll you'll see but the snow was literally a straight angle across the train tracks into the ravine and then and then disappeared uh, where the ravine was. And again, the ravine's now 50, 60 feet, maybe more um, in in depth. But there was no there was no straight path through through that uh, through that snow slide. Two things exist. Two opportunities presented themselves. One, and well, and and a third, but one was to go dig out the ten feet, make it flat, and tool through it. The second was to turn home, go back a full now we're mile and a half now in, but go back a full mile and change, and then go the five miles home and. It's snowing. We're cold. We're anticipating this being a shortcut. So psychologically, we're like, yeah, we want to get home as quickly as we can. We don't want anybody worrying about us. The the third option was to shoot the gap. Now, shooting the gap is has never been a problem. Super easy. It simply means that you hit the slide um, uh, and, and head up the slide just a little bit, and then you and then you go down the other side of the slide. And remember, the slide's only three or four feet um, high, right? It's not a big deal. Uh, I don't want to make it sound more ominous than it is, but we, you, shoot the, you shoot the gap, you go high, come down. There's 10 feet on the other side, plenty of landing space, and we would be able to continue on our way. So... Um, as the gas and nitrous pair that we were, we said, we do this all the time. Now we shoot gaps more in open space, right? You, it's kind of like you go high on a, uh, on a hillside and then turn around and come back down. So we had plenty of experience. What we didn't have and 10 feet, uh, uh, 10 feet is no, no distance whatsoever. The problem was, is that there was a 50, 60 plus ravine on the other side. Should we miss? And so we stopped. We looked at the, uh, the, what the up angle would be as we crossed. And we also looked down over the ravine and it, there was no trees, no rocks, no nothing. It was just a, a, just a snow down to the bottom of the ravine. So we're thinking, well, worst case is that if we go down, then we just shoot back up this ravine, um, plenty of plenty of uh, of of uh, run up to get the, the the momentum we need to get back up on the trail. So we're like, you know what? This is cool. This will be fun. So we we decide to shoot the gap. <laughs> of course, I'm in front. 
And so I have the opportunity to shoot the gap first. Now we're, we're equally good sledders, but, um, so I'm sitting there. I don't know. I have, I, I probably have 10 feet in front of this, of the snow slide to, it doesn't take much to get, to, to get going. And so I'm thinking, all right, I'll shoot up probably six, seven feet above the slide uh, or at, uh, high on the slide and then come down on the other side. And then, and then there'll actually be tracks, right? There'll be tracks for people to, for, uh, uh, for Dion to be able to just lay in and it'll, it'll even be better. So no harm, no foul, you know, just going for it. So I'm like, all right, see you in a second, put on helmets. And I just, I'm, I'm turning the engine, ram, 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 ram. And then I just peel out and hit, shoot it perfectly, right? I shoot up the slide, except the slide was loose. It wasn't, it wasn't that the, it was just powder. It was that the, the slide itself was loose snow. And so if you would have seen it on TV, America's home, uh, Funniest Home Videos, or any of these, or any of these um, craziest, you know, um, human errors, Every, you know, the, the videos you see on YouTube or otherwise, I, I literally, I, I hit up at the top and I'm slight as I'm accelerating through, I slide down the slide and one of my, uh, one of my uh, skis catches the edge of the 10 foot clearing. And I literally miss and head down the ravine. Didn't flip it. Didn't do anything, but I'm all the way down the ravine. So Dion's like, all right. So now, second mistake. Dion's like, well, I'm going to I'm going to get on the other side. <laughs> I'm going to get on the other side and then I'll throw you a rope to get and then we can and then we can get you up on the other side and we can continue down. Nobody I know nobody none of you see the error uh, of our ways. But thinking that it might be a little more packed since I already went up Dion shot the gap and ended up exactly where I was. So notice I didn't try getting out of the ravine before he did it. <laughs> we are thinking, ah, this is easy. No harm, no foul. Now it's continuing to snow and it was a huge snow snowstorm. Later on, you'll understand it had been, it snowed all night long. More on this. <laughs> Oh, more on this in a moment. So we're in the ravine. There's a creek down there, but it's kind of iced over where we were at. So we pulled out and we kept, we shot up that 50, 60 footer and we are getting so close. I mean, literally within feet of the, of the top. And of course we weren't going forward. We wanted to go backwards and just take the long way home, but we're coming within five, six, seven feet of the top, but we could never get up that last, uh, that last bit. And we were mad and scared all at the same time, because we kept revving the engines going up, going up and down, up and down. And we thought the more we did it, the more we would uh, create a, a, a create a, some stick for our tracks to get a hold of. Right. But the further we got, Got up the, the the hill instead of cresting and going over top onto the railroad tracks our skis were sliding down the hill and we could not get up so now we're sitting there looking at each other going what the, what the hell we spent half an hour trying to get back up uh, onto the uh, the erstwhile trail it was not happening so we're like oh crap and you you know what language i usually use Okay, this is no bueno. It is snowing like mad, and we are stuck at this bottom of this hill. Our whole party knows where we went, but they don't know how long it takes for us to get home. Number one. Number two is they know that we're adventurers, and we they're they're we've been we've been night sledding dozens of times, right? We didn't have radios. It, it came to be that we we picked up radios um, every uh, every trip thereafter, but we didn't have radios at the time to notify where we, where we are and what we're doing. So there was no notification 
there was an assumption that we, that there's an easy assumption that, oh, they're fine. And let's, and they're just night sledding. Right. So we didn't know how long we were going to be in this predicament. So I went into crisis management mode, right? This was became kind of an adventure, even though it was stupid circumstances and poor choices. I went into kind of adventure mode, right? Uh, survival skill mode. So uh, funny thing was, there's a thing called, um, there is, there's a term for, for um, conifer trees, right? Uh, for pine trees, et cetera. They call it uh, squaw wood. It's a horrible term. I don't know a better way to call it because I, I was just raised that when when the native americans would go out in the snow they would be able to pull off all, all the all the pine trees they would lose their needles and the and the branches would start falling downward so no snow could penetrate it didn't hold snow and water would run right off they were always dry and you could create a fire so i'm like all right i start harvesting all these different all these uh the twigs and branches that would snap just like that because they were dead but in the middle of the snow they they were not uh they, they weren't wet so we start creating so, to be able to make a fire now here's here's the fun thing now i'm i'm kind of proud of this i i'm just gonna tell you right now i'm kind of proud but we um so we dipped one of these, uh, we didn't have, we didn't have any survival gear. We didn't have a lighter, all foolish decisions all on their own, but no time for that. We didn't have a lighter. We didn't have anything. We're sitting there. We know how to gather wood. Um, and the culvert, the stream that was going through the culvert, you remember that, that we were supposed to cross and continue on our journey. So there was a culvert where we could get out of the rain, uh, excuse me, the snow, but there was, it was about, uh, I don't know, five feet tall. So that water could go under this uh, uh, railroad bridge. Well, the creativity juices were flowing and I had, and so what we did was we took one of these branches and dipped it into the gas tank and then use the toolkit for the sled, open up the spark plug, uh, uh, loosen the spark plug, and then hit the ignition so that the sparks would, would, would ignite and we lit the twig. Very proud of that. Very proud of that. The twig lit the gasoline and we, uh, then we took that burning, the, the burning branch over to the culvert where we uh, set up a fire and began to, to hunker down for we had no idea how long could for the night the final preparation that we did to try and think ahead was since the, the our our group knew where we were but didn't know how far along this path when they decided to tell something to tell somebody about us <laughs> missing we'd want them to be able to see us now it was snowing bad but we 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 decided to to park one of the sleds that they had half a tank or more of gas. We put one of the sleds, turned it on and had the, and had the lights pointing right up so that they were lighting up the snow falling and the tree uh, the trees above the, the railroad line. So that if somebody were looking now, remember the visibility when it was good was only a hundred yards. So they're going to have to get pretty close to us in order to, to, to help. So we had one, so we had one sled sitting up at the top uh, or face up uh, blowing, uh, uh, illuminating the, the trees above the railroad tracks. And then we kept the other one. Uh, we, you know, put the, uh, uh, we would be able to light the fire more if, if we needed to with the gasoline and the spark plug. So there we sat now <laughs> the, so Dion and I've been on all kinds of adventures together uh, by this time, but this one was one of those, like, how long do you think? So he's kind of did a Deadpool. How long do you think it's going to be before they, the, before they start looking for us or before they find us? Because there's the idea of they've been gone too long. Then have they really been gone too long? And then we need to talk to somebody 
And then there's finding somebody, explaining the situation and giving them a decent idea where we are. And then the time it takes to leave town and come and find us. <laughs> that's a whole lot of, that's a whole lot of, they're, they're probably okay. You know, there's, there's because we had nothing like this had ever happened before. We, had, we hadn't ever um, been stranded or anything in, uh, uh, with, in sledding or et cetera. So uh, come to find out it took approximately six hours, <laughs> approximately six hours. So we were stranded six, call it six ish PM. Um, by the time we got down there and everything from six until about midnight, um, we were, we were in this culvert, had a fire, had to sit low because the smoke was coming up to the culvert and then it would, it was going out or, or going along that. So it wasn't comfortable. It was miserable. We were cold, but we had a fire and, and once again, we got to talk and sh sh shoot the shit and, and do our, you know, our bro bonding, right? Well, about midnight or so 1145, the, we hear, we hear the sounds of other sleds. And the sleds were coming the exact way we did. Here's what's embarrassing. First of all, two of the sled, the, the search and rescue team, two of the sled literally just come over the side and down into the ravine and then grab our slide, uh, our, sl uh, our sleds and ride them out. I mean, literally just write them out. And I'm like, we're experienced letters. And we spent a half an hour trying to get no joke. They, they brought their sleds down and then got on our sleds and circled around back to the Creek to get a little running distance. Yeah. Right up on top. First time for both Dion's and my sled first time so embarrassing miserable we're we're cold we're hungry and and worried at this time where we feel better but for six hours we have no clue are we gonna are we gonna walk out um tomorrow morning because we didn't we had a fire but we didn't want to walk out at night during the day uh, chances are of survival are much better especially on a on a a three to five mile hike in the daylight, way better than in the snow at night. So we decided to hunker down until somebody found us or daylight came. So, and of course we'd have to leave our sleds and hike out and then come. So search and rescue would still have to bail us out, right? The, the rental crew would have to bail us out. Well, bottom line is they snapped those sleds right out of the ravine and we, we climbed up the hill um, uh, manually um, and only uh, there was search and rescue and two of our party came to, to make sure we were okay, et cetera, et cetera. So humiliated, wet, tired, smoky. We, <laughs> we head back with the way we came another mile, mile and a half to, um, uh, to the main road and then five miles. And at midnight, five miles is a long, ugly ride when you're cold and wet and hungry and, and just embarrassed. So why do I share this? Well, you guys probably already know where I'm going with this because this is stupid. First of all, where in your life are, are, do you say, Oh, this is easy and get arrogant or comfortable. Where in doing deals, in making loans, how many loans have you done, right? In private lending, how many loans have you done? Boom, boom, boom. Man, I can't fail. This is awesome. I've never had, I'm not having any problems because whoever trained me gave me the tools. And then all of a sudden we get arrogant, we get sloppy, and we think we can't, we're, we are invincible. Yeah. We're not the Marvel a universe superheroes you guys we are not invincible so where do where have you where is your arrogance ended you up 60 feet down a hole <laughs> with no way out and you had to get support to to climb out now another thing could, were there other things that i could have done when it was i was going to shoot the gap 
Were there other things that I could have done to establish whether or not this was a safe move? Yes, but my arrogance and my supposed skill didn't, uh, I had a huge blind spot for how skillful I was, which of course later turned out that I have no skill whatsoever, apparently, because these got the search and rescue guys literally drive our sleds out of the ravine first time. So I got no skills, comparatively speaking, for self-survival. And then I'm making a decision to shoot the gap. Did I go up and see how strong or how solid the snow was? No, I just took it as uh, same old, same old. Didn't understand. I didn't look to see what the did, did the scree fall as well as the the uh, 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 the was it just snow or was it pebbles and rocks because the the rocks let go above and part was part of the part of the slide didn't even check and that's what was part of the problem is it wasn't just snow it was a rock slide uh, underneath and dirt slide underneath the snow so when i was evaluating the risk versus the reward now remember this cost me over a grand us over a grand to get us bailed out. So, and our families that we were traveling with, they're like, we're not paying this, you idiots. So I didn't, did I do any of the math? Did I do any math? Well, what happens if this is the worst case scenario to see what that 10 feet, my arrogance oh, through and through over and over. My arrogance was I got this. I've done this a dozen times. I hadn't done it a dozen times. I've shot a dozen gaps on the side of a mountain where I wasn't going to fall off into the outer darkness by the time I finished. So risk versus reward. I was overestimating, overestimating my skill set. <laughs> no joke. I thought I was the bomb on a sled. And... <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, yeah. Do I have survival skills? Yes. I've uh, Eagle Scout, Mr. Eagle Scout here. I can camp three days in the snow and with, with the lighter and, and certain provisions done it before just to, as an adventure, but not out of, but I went in planned in those examples here. I literally was, was clawing through because if I couldn't have created a fire, if I hadn't been able to do the math, if I didn't have that kind of experience, we would be sitting in a culvert freezing our asses off with no fire no, and no light, no nothing. We weren't prepared. We didn't have flashlights in our gear because usually we head home at daylight. We didn't have anything. Think, think, the, think the, the, the sledding gods that there was a toolkit in every sled so that we could ratchet off the, the, the uh, spark plugs and create a spark. Um, for the for the the twigs that we had put in the gasoline tank or dipped in the gasoline tank. So you guys, now here's the other thing. Did we have a guide? Did we have somebody who had traveled that? Yeah, let's go do the. I've done it 15 times. Let's go. Let's go uh, do the railroad tracks home. We knew speaking. We had a map of the area. We knew where it was headed. We had no idea what the terrain would look like. And we had no idea how to counteract the, the contingencies that we ran into of deep, deep snowing, deep ravines, the uh, rocks slash uh, 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 snow slides, and just arrogantly tooled along. The terrain was not on the, uh, the terrain we encountered was not on the map. So guys, how, what have you done in your personal life or especially for our purposes here in our, in our business life, how do we make, how do we cavalierly just go running into the burning house without a plan, <laughs> right? How is it? How many mistakes that can we recount right now while you listen to me? How many mistakes can we can we recount that we can literally list in our mind saying, I didn't pay attention to this. I didn't plan for this. I, I, I thought the map was the terrain, had no clue how to handle this. And 
and we lose money or our lives or our loved ones' lives and put them at risk. So my take-home message here, guys, is, is, is easy. I thought I was better at something than I was. And, my, and since I had, wasn't talking to anybody about what was in my blind spot, I was counting on the arrogance. My decisions were based on an, my arrogance and my overestimation of my skills. Now, I'm the guy that's always talking about leveling up. I'm the guy who's always saying, don't get down on yourself, plan well, and, and take intentional risks in a proven with a proven model, right? I don't teach, share, or, or encourage willy nilly anything, right? But part of it is because I've learned through just horrible experiences like this, that I cannot afford that the downside is so much worse than the upside. Think of it in, in this context. So what was my upside? If it would have worked out, I would have shot the gap, gone along there. Let's pretend that the bridge wasn't out, or let's pretend that there wasn't more rock slides. Let's pretend that it, it was peachy all the way into town. My only upside was a woohoo. We found a new trail. Woohoo. Aren't we the man? We, we took some risks and it paid off. That was the only upside. Now, of course, we live our lives through adventure. Our, many of us live our lives and we want adventure. We want those, those thrilling moments. But really, what's the upside? In this case, the downside was a thousand dollars and misery and the opportunity to share a story that it is embarrassing. Yeah, this could sound like, oh yeah, over cocktails, I could share this story and it would, but when I get honest with myself, this was stupid, straight stupidity. So how do we, in everything that we're doing, guys, how do we overestimate our skill set? How many of us over or have done well so often that we play fast and loose to our own detriment or to, to, to a significant loss. How many of us think that the map, just because you've gone to real estate school or just because you, you have a, 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 a private lending guru, but uh, just because you're doing business lines, or you, you got a business, you think the map is the terrain. They gave you a map, but the reason why there's a coach there is so that you can talk to them about somebody who has turned around and not shot the gap and had a win as a result. So in fundability, in, in, in optimization of your borrower profiles, all those things, we can talk about uh, uh, having a guide that supports you. But the bottom line is, is don't do these these th if you don't know the terrain, not the map, everybody thinks they got the, the funding map out there and it's full of landmines as we've learned from previous episodes. And as we've learned from my boot camp in, in, in my, uh, in my book, the new F word guys, we think the map is the terrain and it is not. So I encourage you to make sure whatever you're doing, I don't care if it's with me, if it's out there in the world, uh, improving yourselves as a, as a buy and holder, a fix and flipper, a private lender, a hard money guru, whatever your jam is, make sure that you ha have the presence of mind to know the difference between, oh, this, yeah, there's a, I mean, even think of the logic. Oh, there's a railroad track going into town. Here's a railroad track. This railroad track must go into town. <laughs> Even that, while probable, could be an error in judgment. So I'm certainly not saying don't have adventures. I'm certainly saying make your rewards worth the risks that you take. Make sure you have a guide. That would have been such a fun trip if a guide would have been able to show us more adventurous ways to get that thrill that, 
doesn't cost us a fortune and 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 uh <laughs> humiliating us in front of our families we've never lived it down ever it's still a thing so guys that's 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 the message in this episode is it worth it and if it is then make sure you have a plan to navigate the terrain of your life not just say hooey i got a map this is Merrill Chandler, your host of the Get Fundable Universe, and it's my job to make getting you funded easier. Thank you for listening to the Get Fundable podcast. Please leave comments because Merrill would love to read about your aha moments from this episode. And be sure to visit GetFundable.com to read our blog, get important links, join our community, and much, much more, like ordering Merrill's tell-all book that is changing the world, The New F Word. And you got to tell your friends about this podcast because we want them to get fundable too.